So today I wanted to talk to you guys about why I bought the FX3 in 2024. So the FX3 was released on February 21st in 2021. This camera is already three years old. So you might be asking me, why in the world did I buy a three-year-old camera in the event that they might release the FX3 Mark II sooner rather than later? So my reason number one is that it might not be new to the market, but it is new to me. You see, I'm used to shooting on a Canon EOS R6 and don't get me wrong, those video features were fantastic. It shot 4K 10-bit 422. I, I shot 4K 60 frames per second sometimes, but I was never really confident in shooting long format video on that camera because it always had a tendency to overheat. So I never really felt confident shooting professional video for my clients on that camera. Reason number two, that it is not a photocentric first camera and video second, that the FX3 is primarily a video camera. And what that means is that all of these video features that we like, the time code, the built-in XLR port, long format video and 4K 10-bit 422, all of those features are no issue for this FX3. And those are some of the reasons why I like it. For as long as I've been a cinematographer, I've offered both professional photography and videography, but I've always found myself enjoying more of the video centric side of things in cinematography than I have professional photography. So with going with the FX3, it kind of gave me that nudge to only focus the video clients that I have rather than also worrying about the professional photography side of things. Don't get me wrong, this camera can still take professional photos. However, it's only a 12 megapixel sensor. So I wouldn't really recommend shooting professional photos on this camera. I probably will only ever take photos of me and my wife and me and my wife and my dog with the occasional photo capabilities of the FX3. And lastly, reason number three, portability and ease of use. So at this point in my career, I've shot on Blackmagic Pocket 4Ks, I've shot on Blackmagic Pocket 6Ks, I've shot on several Canon, I've also shot on several Sonys. I've had the Sony a7 III since the release in 2018, and this is just my personal opinion, don't yell at me in the comments, but Sony has been the most reliable in my experience. See, so I've had the Sony a7 III since the release, and man, I've taken that camera all over the country. I've shot hundreds of weddings on it. I've never really had a single issue with it other than the cosmetic. Cosmetically, my camera has been used and abused, but it is a tool, so it's meant to do that. The FX3 is just a really small form factor, similar to the a7 III, but it offers better low light performance. It has better dynamic range. I'm able to shoot long format video at 4K 10-bit 422, and I'm able to do this in such a small, compact form factor. With the Blackmagics, don't get me wrong, the image is absolutely amazing, and I still recommend Blackmagics to this day. However, for my workflow, it's not ideal for me to have a rigged out Blackmagic camera for a run and gun situation. See, up until this point in my creative adventures, I've had so many different camera systems in my book bag. I've had a Fuji X100V, I've had the Canon EOS R6, I've had the a7 III. All that does for me is it gives me paralysis of the analysis. You see, I am so worried about what camera I'm shooting on that it almost paralyzes me to even uh, bring something out to shoot to begin with. So by me selling the Canon R6, it gave me that freedom to only have the Sony FX3 and still the a7 III for the occasional photo, photo shoots that I do. By me still having the a7 III, I still have the ability to take professional photos for my clients, but I'm only locked into the Sony ecosystem. And don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna get rid of my Fuji X100V anytime soon. That's more of a just a family style camera to begin with. I wouldn't really recommend that for anything professional use for the work that I do. At the end of the day, what I'm learning about my experience with content creation is that there's always going to be the newest, latest camera. And don't get me wrong, I've had FOMO. I dreamt about this, getting this camera for almost a year now. And finally, I was able to pull the trigger. And all this is doing is allowing me to have freedom to not worry about what, what kind of gear that I have in my book bag, but actually getting out there and shooting something I'm really stoked to have this camera. I think it's going to give me the freedom and capabilities to do so many creative things, even though this camera is three years old. I hope you found this video helpful guys and I'll see you next time.